Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. So I hope that you must have watched my previous video on Geminid's meteor shower in which I discussed in detail that how, when and where we have to see the Geminid's meteor shower. So now it's the time to see that how to photograph this Geminid's meteor shower by just using our smartphone. So in this video today, I'm going to discuss in detail about photographing it and I will also share the details regarding the promo settings that we need to use depending upon the sky conditions and the light pollution. Also, I will tell how to track the radiant and also how to move our phone uh, according to the movement of the radiant in the night sky. Okay, so in this video, all these topics are going to be discussed in detail. So please watch the whole video and don't skip any point so that you will get to know about everything in detail. But before beginning with that, if you want to know more about smartphone astrophotography or if you want to join a community for the smartphone astrophotography on telegram group then the link to that telegram group is given in the description so friend where you can join it and uh, lots of smartphone astrophotographers are in that group so you will get much more knowledge about it and i'm also in that group so you will get regular updates regarding such events like the uh, meteor showers conjunctions and other events also you will get to learn about the astrophotography by just with the smartphone okay so if you wish to join a uh, let's say a group community then you can just click on the link that is given in the description and join the telegram group so without wasting much time let's begin our today's video so friends let's first know that how we can capture the images of the night sky or you can say that how to do the astrophotography with the smartphone okay so for that we need to use this pro mode or you can say the expert mode which is an inbuilt mode in our camera of our smartphone nowadays almost every smartphone has got this pro mode feature in their camera mode and you might have seen this pro mode but might not have used it or maybe you might have used it but because of the improper settings improper settings uh, you might have got a white image or let's say a very dark image okay so with this pro mode only we'll be able to do the astrophotography i mean we will be able to capture the night sky images and if the pro mode is there in your phone then you don't need to use any other application okay make sure you have to use the pro mode only but sometimes in some of the older phones the problem is that in pro mode you can see in the uh, screenshot that i have shown different settings are shown that is uh, let's say starting from the left side you can see that exposure verification focusing option shutter speed iso then white balance okay so uh, in some of the older phones this shutter speed option is not there in the pro mode so if that is the case in your phone only then you can use this deep sky camera application you can see over here this application is similar to the pro mode in the regular phones okay so you will get to set the shutter speed because it is very important uh, feature for the pro mode if shutter speed is not there then you will not be able to take the long exposure images okay shutter speed means the amount of time du during which uh, the let's say the shutter or you can say the lens will remain open of the rear camera of the let's say smartphone okay and for that particular amount of time the light will enter and we will get a image okay so shutter speed is very important make sure you check that if shutter speed is not there in your pro mode then you can just uh, download this deep sky camera application it is very useful now once we have known that pro mode is there then comes the part of settings okay see uh, before that i want to tell one thing also some of the uh, let's say astro photographers might be telling you that you can use the g cam but uh, the problem in gcam is that it will take some uh, time let's say about four to eight minutes to capture a single shot okay so let's say if in that time duration let's say four to five meteors are passing in your frame then it may be possible that it might not get all the meteors okay so uh, it is a bit problematic is compared to that if we use the pro mode and if we are setting let's say the shutter speed of about 25 seconds then in one minute we'll be able to capture two images so in eight minutes we'll be kept able to capture 16 to 17 images okay so that is fruitful for us because we know that the pro mode will not function like a gcam gcam will take about four to eight minutes for single image under dark skies okay so that is the problem so once again i'm repeating please use the pro mode if pro mode is not having shutter speed in your phone then just use the deep sky camera okay so now let's see that what settings we need to set depending upon the light pollution so friends now let's see the settings that we need to use for the pro mode okay depending upon the sky conditions so i have been doing astrophotography since last three and a half years 
and with that experience i have photographed uh, the night sky from bottle 5 as well as from bottle 4 and bottle 3 sky location so whenever i do astrophotography and i uh, let's say recommend the settings for uh, astrophotography to my friends also then let's say if you are under dark such let's say from bottle 1 to bottle 3 then you can use this settings you can keep the shutter speed in the range of 20 to 25 seconds see i'm not suggesting you to keep the shutter speed up to 30 seconds because at 30 seconds some trailing will be there okay so you can keep the shutter speed from uh, let's say 20 to 25 seconds under dark skies that is bottle 1 to bottle 3 and the iso can be from 1600 to 3200 or above than that okay depending upon the sky condition if the sky is extremely clear uh, clouds are not there and the sky is let's say pretty dark then you can uh, just uh, uh, let's say do some trial shots and then you can increase the iso if you want to make sure you set the focus to infinity see we are assuming that the object we are photographing in the night sky is very far from us so we have to set the focus to maximum or infinity please make sure you don't change the uh, let's say angle mode okay please keep your phone's angle mode in the wide angle don't change it to ultra wide angle because in ultra wide angle the shutter speed and iso will not function as the regular one okay it will get changed okay so please make sure that the angle is wide angle and uh, once again i'm repeating from bottle 1 to bottle 3 skies you can use this setting shutter speed from 20 to 25 seconds iso from 1600 to 3200 or above focus should be maximum white balance should be auto and the uh, let's say exposure verification should be zero as well as the wide angle mode should be used okay now you must be saying that uh, uh, you must be get confused that what should be the perfect iso so for that i always advise you that uh, please take some trial shots before beginning to capture the actual images okay because that will enable you to know that what is the best settings depending upon the sky condition you can just uh, do some couple of shots with some different settings of iso and shutter speed and get to know the perfect shots for the condition okay so this is how you have to you know, use the settings under dark skies now let's say if you are under light polluted skies let's say bottle 4 or bottle 5 skies then you can use these settings you can uh, set the shutter speed let's say in the range of uh, up 8 seconds to 15 seconds and the iso can be from uh, let's say 400 uh, let's say not 400 but say about 600 to 1600 okay not beyond that okay so once again i'm repeating the shutter speed under light polluted skies that is bottle 4 and bottle 5 skies can be from 8 seconds to 15 seconds the iso should be from 600 to 1600 and uh, regarding the focus it should be maximum a uh, wide angle mode should be used white balance is to be set auto and exposure verification should be set zero now this was regarding the uh, pro mode settings now if you are under let's say bottle 6 bottle 7 or bottle 8 then i will not suggest you for photography it is very difficult to see under bottle 7 8 or 9 skies but you can still go up to bottle 6 for bottle 6 you just have to lower down further lower down the settings as i said as compared to the bottle 5 okay so you have to just uh, lower down the settings as compared to the bottle 5 under bottle 6 and then you can use the uh, pro mode and get the image of the night sky okay so this was regarding the settings that you need to use under dark skies as well as light polar skies now let's see that how many images we need to capture and how we can capture the multiple images so uh, i have photographed the earlier meteor showers also let's say the torrid meteor shower you can see on the screen as well as the orionis meteor shower under bottle four skies okay so i just keep my four up uh, about let's say about two or three hours during the peak time but uh, for this orionis and torrid meteor shower the condition was that i captured these images you can see on the screen uh, in the last year only from my village which is bottle four sky location and uh, as I said, I set the same settings, but I got very little time. Let's say about 40 to 45 minutes. So uh, let's say if you are keeping the shutter speed to be 25 seconds, then you can get an idea that in one minute uh, you will be able to capture two images. So let's say if you have one hour, then you can set the number of images. Let's say one hour means 60 minutes. So near about 120 images you can capture. So you can set the uh, uh, let's say the number of images uh, about 150 or something let's say if you have got only one hour time but let's say if you are planning from uh, midnight let's say 12 o'clock up to the early morning that is five o'clock or six o'clock then it becomes very uh, long process so for multiple images i will suggest that uh, please keep about 300 to 400 images uh, for photographing any meteor shower okay because in that number of images only you will get to know that how many meteors are shown 
okay and how many meteors are captured okay it may be not be possible that every time you are photographing the meteor will come and strike in your strike throughout your frame and you will get to photograph it okay so it is purely depending on the possibility of the sky conditions as well as on luck so i will suggest you to take about 300 to 400 multiple images uh, with the help of the pro mode now how to capture these multiple images that is also a major task because every time it is not possible to click on the shutter button again and again so for that there is an alternate option you can see on screen the timers mode is shown in many of the phones the timers mode is now available uh, let's say i'm using this poco x3 it is having this timers mode i guess redmi phones is also having and some of the realme phones are also having this timers mode the timers mode is similar uh, to the intervalometer application which is used for photographing the multiple images okay you can see here that time burst mode is enabling to set the number of frames the interval between them and just you once you have done it just click on the shutter button and the time burst mode will not stop until it has reached the final image okay so you can set about you can see 0 to 600 images and the interval between two images is from 1 second to 60 seconds so this is how you have to use the time burst mode if time burst mode is not there then you can use this intervalometer application it is a paid application and it is available on play store only and it is similar to the time burst mode it is also same you have to set the number of images to you that you want to capture and the interval and also the timer also before uh, you can start the capturing of the images okay so this is how you have to capture the multiple images now let's see how to uh, let's say uh, track the radian by using the stargazing application so on screen you can see some of the images uh, that you uh, i have shown you can use any of the application and all these applications are available on play store and i have also given the link to download this application in the description below from where you can download it so now let's switch over to the stargazing application so friends you can see over here that i am using the stellarium application over here and uh, this application is also available on play store as i said earlier so the user interface of this application looks something like this okay so uh, how to first uh, let's say track the radian so for that we first need to set our location and depending upon that the uh, let's say directions will get set in the application and then we'll be able to track the radian accurately so for that what we have to do is you can see some options are shown so you have to click on the top left side option okay and then move to the settings and then to the locations you can see different uh, let's say options are there for setting the location and you can use any one of them i generally use this third option that is uh, name typing the name of your city or uh, let's say country or location okay and you can see that a list is shown and uh, you will get to know about your location okay so once you have done it just click on your location and set the location once it is done then you have to come back on the original uh, let's say uh, user interface of this application now you can see that as i'm moving the star map by using my fingers you can see that different uh, let's say constellations and stars are shown in this application that will be able to uh, visible to us in the night sky okay in every direction now we have to uh, change the date and time according to the peak time so that peak of this december uh, i mean gemini's meteor shower is from december 13 to 15 so i will now change the date you can see it is 8 december today so i will change it to 13 december and i will set the time up to uh, let's say 22 hours 23 hours okay that means 11 o'clock in the night now once it is done we have to search for gemini's okay so for that we have to click on this uh, top right side option that is magnifying glass like option and we have to just type for Geminids. Now, as soon as you can see that as soon as I have searched for Geminids, the star map has moved in the application and it is showing the Geminids now. Now, this is how we have find out the Geminids in the application. Now, what about the sky? We have to find the location of Geminids in the sky also. So for that, what we have to do is we have to click on this center option. You can see that a compass like option is shown in the center. So as soon as you will click on it, the star map in the application will point in the direction in which our phone is facing. So currently my phone is facing somewhere in between, let's say south to west direction. But uh, uh, in this application, you can see that the star map is showing me east. So as soon as I will click on the center option, that is you can see over here in compass like option is shown. Okay, just uh, uh, it is very light. 
okay so as soon as i will click on it it will tell me to point my device up so as soon as i will point my device up you can see that the star map has moved and as i said that my phone is earlier facing in the waste detection okay so now the star map has uh, moved to the waste direction but you can see that the pointer is shown and it is showing me the location of the geminids because we have searched for geminids so we have to move our phone in such a way that the geminids will come exactly in the center of this circle okay so you can see over here that i am moving my phone and now you can see that the geminids have come almost in the center part of my uh, of this circle okay so this is how you have to locate the geminids in the night sky now the geminids uh, i mean the radiant of this geminids is uh, located accurately in the night sky and you can just uh, see that if any let's say communication tower or if any or if any building is there then you can just pinpoint it okay in your uh, by going on a terrace terrace this is the uh, direction of geminids in the night sky at uh, this particular time okay so this is how we have to find the geminids once again i am showing you how to find it so i will change the direction okay see my phone is now facing towards north so i will once again search for geminids okay i have searched for it but my phone is not currently aligned in that direction so you can see this compass option i will click on this compass option and it will uh, i mean it will show me in which direction my phone is facing so now i will move my phone in such a way that the radiant of this geminids comes exactly in the circle okay now you can see that it has come in the circle in the middle part and now i have arranged it in this way okay so this is how we have to find out the geminids in the night sky and then you can start photographing it now the geminids radiant will move with the time so you can also predict that in which direction it will move so let's say if i uh, move the our point okay so you can see that it will move from east to northeast then again north then uh, again it will and it will finally come back in the northwest okay let's say at 5 30 it will be in between north and west so it will be in the northwest you can see over here so this is how you have to track the geminids with the time and uh, move your phone and you will get to know uh, about the radiant uh, de depending upon the time and then you can keep photographing the geminids meteor shower so i hope that you must have got enough information about photographing these geminids so if you still want to uh, i mean if you still have any query then you can just comment below or contact me on my instagram you can see over here my instagram id is shown as well as i have given the link to my instagram and in the description below so this was about photographing the geminids by using smartphone so please share this video and uh, please share it with your friends so that they can also get to know about it and they can also enjoy this geminids meteor shower thank you for watching